Coders have multiple platforms where they can compete with each other like lead code and hacker rank. But do you know where data scientists compete? Kaggle. Hey everyone, this is Shashank Mishra currently working as data engineer 3 at Expedia and in today's video, I will introduce you to Kaggle platform and we will be doing some basic data analysis using Pandas library on Kaggle notebook. So before starting the video, if you are new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button and press the notification icon. And if you want to learn more from leading industry experts, then do check out Scaler's event page. Link is in the description. So what exactly is Kaggle? It is an open community for data scientists and machine learning engineers. It allows users to collaborate with each other and to see each other's work as well. It also allows users to find and publish multiple data sets because when it comes to practice data analysis or build data science projects or machine learning models, we need some data to tune our models, to train our models as well. And to kill the system dependencies, it also allows the user to use GPU integrated notebooks so that you just need the internet connection and access to the web browsers. You can log in into your Kaggle account and start building the projects. You don't need to worry about what kind of machine you have to build data science projects. And this Kaggle platform is very much popular among the aspiring data scientists because this is the only platform which allows you to build solid platform because when you appear in the interviews, they need some proof what kind of projects you have built. This platform you can use to showcase your work. You can use this platform to compete with different data scientists because it allows different competitions. You can check out the problem statement, build those projects. And as an aspiring data scientist, you should definitely use this platform because you can take part in multiple competitions and it will help you to create a solid portfolio which will make your profile stand out in the interviews. So now let me show you the step by step guide to use Kaggle platform. Let's get started. So this is the official website of Kaggle. You can simply open your web browser and type kaggle.com. Then this home page will be open. So before starting and creating the Kaggle account, let's read about these cool facts. So you can see here at this moment 50,000 public data sets which is definitely a really good amount of data if you want to create data science projects and want to build cool machine learning projects definitely you can use these data sets which belongs to different domains sometimes healthcare, aviation all these things and also let's say you are a completely beginner into data science and ML so you need some referring point right so you can use these notebooks which are already public because this is a collaborative platform different data scientists ml engineers who are working from across the globe they have their accounts and their code is open to refer so you can definitely refer these things so now let's look at how we can create our account in kaggle so you can click on this register with google or if you have a different email id you can use that option and after that you can pick your respective email id and since i have already created my account you can see this is the dashboard which has been created if you are a complete new beginner what you will see you will just need to accept some agreements and you need to mention few details and after that this home page will be created for you as well so let me show you what are different features available on kaggle as of now and what you can explore First thing I was talking about competitions, right? So click on this tab and there you will see different competitions which are running or upcoming competitions as well. So here, let me show you new to Kaggle. Then these will be the basic competitions, Kaggle data sets, proper problem statement you can open. So let's look at this one, Titanic machine learning from disaster. Click on this one and this is how you can see the whole problem statement description what you actually need to do what this challenge is all about okay and the guidelines as well how you can submit your project right how to create all those guidelines will be mentioned here and after that this data part which is definitely important one and 
I was talking about why this platform is so much popular just because of this reason. Because as a beginner, when you start creating projects, you mostly struggle uh, with the findings of data sets, where to find it and how we can use this volume of the data. But Kaggle is there to help you out. So here you can see this data set, right? And you can even see the basic analysis, what kind of data it is. And you can even use this data set for your different projects. It's not all about that you can just download this data or you can use this data for project specific. But if you have any other requirement and you want to play around it, you can simply download it from here and it will be available in your local machine. Now this code part here, what you can do, you can actually look at this part, what all submissions have been made so far for this competition. And here you can see this start like so far you can see more than 14,000 plus teams have participated and this is an open competition forever open you can start any point of time. And this is also a powerful thing the discussions part let's say you were trying to implement something and those things are not working out for you. You can definitely post a comment and even you can look out for the different comments posted by different collaborators so that if any of the mistake or any of the question specifically you are looking for you can find it from here. Then the leaderboard part you can see who is on the top and how much someone has scored for this competition and you can read about the guidelines and rules as well. So this is just about the forever open competitions but time to time let's say there is a new uh, organization or any open source community which is hosting the competitions related to data science or ML engineering right you can find it from here and this is the beauty I was talking about different domain of the data right prize money obviously really good so this is something which is going to help you a lot in order to build your solid portfolio now data sets part which I was talking about let's say you want to practice something around healthcare data and you want to find it. So what you can do either you can use these tags let's say computer science if I type something here you can see cancer county level super store sales data India GDP data right fast food classification data sets lots of things are already available let's open this one and here if I go to this data card part you can see this is the CSV data and you can look out what all columns are available and if you want to download this complete data set just click on this select all and apply and after that you can simply click on this download button and after that you can see this data will be downloaded in your local machine but by any reason you don't want to import all these columns just a specific requirement for some specific use cases just select only those columns apply it and download that version of this data. So that is just one example and if I go back to this again and if I type let's say the movie right. So you can see you can find relevant data sets from the entertainment or movie. So here this is the data it looks like movies data its ratings right. Here we can see what are columns, name, rating, genre, year, when it was released, what was the score, votes, director, all these things we can find it from here. All right. Now the next part which is the code. This is the section where we will also focus and as I mentioned in the beginning that we will be doing some basic data analysis using the Kaggle notebook. So from here you can create your fresh notebook. And let's say you have created more than one notebook and you have saved your work, you will find it inside this tab, which is your work. So I was preparing some demo that is how you can see demo underscore notebook, which is already present here. And I will uh, refer it for our basic data analysis, which I was talking about. So how it will look like basically the way we create the Python Jupyter notebooks, right? Let's say you want to work with the NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, or even 
PISPA codes, right? The Jupyter Notebook is a kind of interpreted environment which allows you to write your code and execute it on the go. Okay. And this is the open discussions part here. This is a complete open forum. Anytime any sort of doubt or question you have, you can definitely post it. And there will be uh, folks who are as other aspiring data scientists or ML engineers and they will definitely reply on your questions. And in the more sections, you can find time to time release blogs, documentation. And if you want to host a competition, let's say you are an organization, you want to host something, you can do it from here. You can also raise any ticket or you have any concerns related to Kaggle platform, you can contact the team. So these are the features and I would highly recommend this part, take parts in the competitions. Maybe in the beginning, you are not able to solve the entire competitions, but it will help you to give a direction that how you should proceed with your learnings of data scientists, animal engineering, which is definitely a must do thing. So now let's get started with the actual part, the basic implementation of data analysis using the pandas library. And for that one, I will start from the Kaggle notebook. So here, if I click on this create option, uh, it will help me to open this part new notebook. Okay. So this is the ID sort of environment you can see here. And now I will guide you with the step by step process that how this session will be started and what all settings we can do it from here. And along with this one, I will open the demonstration which I have already prepared. So I will go inside this your work tab. And if I click on it, you can see this was the previous demo which I prepared. And if I click on it, this is how it will look like. And it was already coded. So same thing I will follow on a separate notebook and we'll see the step by step process of doing this data analysis. So first, let me give a relevant name to this one. For example, Kaggle first video. Okay. Now this is here and this is the interpreted sort of environment as I already talked about. So at any moment, if we want to remove this piece of code, just select this part and this delete one you can click on and it will be deleted. And let me show you this part at this moment, this execution has not yet started. Nothing will be printed on the screen. So typically this is a Python sort of environment and we can even change these settings. Let's say you want to use something different. Obviously for data scientists, these are the two preferred languages, Python and R. So if you want to code in R, you can select this one, but for our demonstration, we'll be using Python. And here, if you want to persist something, the files, variables, all these things that can be cached. And here, other options we can explore. If we want to schedule this particular notebook to run, let's say you have created a proper project and time to time you are getting the data inside it or incremental data you are uploading time to time, then what you can do, you can just schedule your notebook to get executed with some frequency, let's say uh, every one hour or weekly, daily, monthly, and you can mention the start date. And from that time onwards, it will start executing automatically once that frequency hit. So that scheduling we can also do. And from here, let's say we want any help uh, while coding the things on the Kaggle notebook we can get it from here. So we'll keep the settings default for this part. And if I type something, let's say we will try to print my first Kaggle project, right? So this is a piece of code which we are writing in Python and how you can execute it. This is selected and you can see this play button here and just click on it and it will take just few seconds to create a session. And then I will also show you that how you can see the GPU part. And when it comes to data science and ML project, then you need more capacity in terms of the execution. 
so you can enable that part as well at this moment this is the time elapsed for this particular session and the total disk space or the total space which has been allowed for the free account here and the cpu uses the ram all these things we can see here right and uh, let me close it and if you want to restart anything you can do it from here now let me talk about this part you can see this was the first line of code we executed and we can see the output now if i want to add another line of code and we want to execute it we can just click on this plus code part and if i type a equals to 5 and b equals to 6 and if i do it in this way print a plus b and if i execute it we will see this output so the way your python program gets executed when you code it completely and a step by step process happens in the similar fashion you can use the kaggle notebook so as i said we will be doing some basic data analysis using the pandas library so in this video in total you will learn two things first of all how to use this kaggle platform also how to use the basic fundamentals of pandas library so for our basic data analysis we will be working on imdb ratings means this is the data set basically for the movies with the proper data elements like the actor who was the director the movie title name the total rating budget all these kind of values will be there so let me show you the data which i have already downloaded and how it looks like so this is imdb data dot csv let me expand it so you can see these are the values there this is the ranking of the movies the title guardians of the galaxy what was the genre and the total description about the particular movie who was the director actors in which year it was released total runtime in the minutes what was the rating total votes what was the revenue in us dollar in terms of the million as a unit and the meta score so these are the fields we have so what we want to do so first let me upload this imdb data on this workspace i will show you those options and even before that let me first clean these lines so i will select it will delete it and i will delete this one as well all right so how to upload the data which you have let's say you have downloaded it from somewhere else you want to upload it in this workspace so you can use this option right and uh, click on this one this part which is the upload symbol and then you can basically browse the files from your local system i'll click on it and i can find this imdb data here and i'll open it and then i need to give some title to this a data set which we are uploading a sort of folder name so demo underscore data kind of thing i will name it and now i will upload this part okay so if i click on it so here you can see this message this file already exists in the data set input data so why it is telling me because you look at this part here i have already downloaded it so let me just remove it from here and i will just delete this part and then i can simply do it first let me cross it and click on confirm and i'll click on the reload part I will browse the file, pick it up again and give a name to it, demo data, right? And then we can click on this, skip duplicates and click on it. Include duplicates. So now it is saying we are processing data and after that, you can simply close this part and you can see preparing to download now on this right hand side you can see this thing one output directory has been created for us and 
one input related di directory has also been created. So if I expand it from here, you can see this IMDB data which we uploaded. So we will be using it in our pandas library to read data from a CSV file. We will look at different operations, how to read the data and how to print the data frames, how to select columns, derive a new column, group by operation and these basic operations we will be doing on top of it. So let me start with that part. So pandas is basically one of the important data analysis library available in Python and with the help of pandas we can read the data in the structured form like a typical row columnar data and then we can do different analysis. So first I will import the pandas library pandas as pd and if I click on it here right it has been executed so the point which I want to clarify and you can even observe the same thing that we are not bothering about installing these packages differently because this Kaggle platform is itself so much enriched in terms of the library, library supports that we don't need to install anything explicitly, okay. So import pandas as pd and then after that I want to write a step how to or basically syntax to read csv data and syntax to read csv data and uh, create a data frame so what is the syntax for it i'll simply copy this part and we'll explain it how does it actually work so pd dot read csv now since this is the local workspace you have your own account and this is the workspace which has been assigned to your account specific so what will happen how we can read this imdb data here and what kind of input path we need to mention here so how you can copy it just click on this part right as you can see copy file path it will just copy the entire file path for you and now you can simply mention it here okay so this is the absolute path for it and this is the function we are using from the pandas library pd which is the alias name we have given for our library so pd dot read csv and the total absolute path and then this is the csv data means comma separated so as this is the interface you can see proper visualized data in the form of rows and columns but if i open it differently this raw data right in some notepad kind of thing so there you will see it differently right the values which are written they are properly comma separated okay so that is why we need to provide these configurations that when we are reading the csv data what will be the separator or let's say in the raw data you don't have any kind of the header so how you can ignore that part you can even provide your own custom names for the columns you can define the data types all those kind of mappings can be done and you will explore these options more as soon as you start reading different type of the data sets so here separator is the comma means that particular character which is being used to separate out these column values so that's what i have mentioned here and after that whatever data frame object is getting generated i am assigning it into this variable now what will happen if I just mention this thing df so ultimately what it will do you can see this is the entire data set we are able to see here in total 1000 rows okay so that is how we are able to print it and you can see the column names properly it was able to read it and all the uh, column values which we wanted to get that is here so now let me show you another option that if we want to just look at some starting rows or only few number of rows in our output how we can do that so we can use one of the method named as head so let me type it and since we have already created our data frame object that is why it is accessible in other boxes as well uh, 
if you want to relate it what happens in python programs let's say you have written something and you have executed it and once execution is done and you want to refer it somewhere else that will not happen but that is how these notebooks are different from uh, the others like the interpreted code so this data frame object was derived here and that is why we can use it so now if i click on this part df dot head right it is just printing few of the starting records by default it will print the five and if we want to print more let's say 10 20 something i can add that number and only those number of records from the top of the data frame will be printed so this was the part now second one we can see let's say if we want to check how we can see the total number of columns and uh, after that if we want to see the data type or the complete details about a data frame it's the data types for each column how we can do that first check the list of columns so how we can do that df dot columns this is the attribute we can use and now if i click so this will eventually give us a list type of object here you can see in this list rank title these are the column names which has been displayed and we can use it now how to check the entire information total info about the data frame so we can use this method named as info all right now if i execute it so there you can see all the details and even including the metadata sort of thing we will be getting with the help of info method what are the columns and what is the total count of those records in which this particular column value is not null and even the data type is also mentioned like integer object float these kind of things so this is also helpful if you want to just give a quick summary that what kind of attributes have been included in your data frame after that we will look at other aspect of it let's say if i want to select a specific column range and we want to just slice our data frame how we can do it so if this is our data frame let's say we do it df dot head and we execute it again so we can see these are the columns and in output data frame for example i just want to print the columns from the first column rank till genre right so how we can do that we can slice this part and you will be able to relate it with the python list data structures right because data frame in pandas exactly like a 2d or two dimensional list like it works in python so in the same way we can access it so for this one we need to do the slicing and in the list data structure indexing actually starts from 0 1 2 and the parameter which we need to provide print this is the comment let me put first print column ranges and here if i do it in this way right data frame and i make it like this if you can see here we will provide this number df 1 colon 4 and if i run this part so what will happen only this number of rows will be printed and here the entire range of column is getting included so for this part what is happening we need to slice it in different way because this range we provide along with the data frame name works for the rows only so if we want to make it executable for the columns as well we want to slice it we need to do it in a different way so that way will be like this sort of slicing means within the data frame we need to mention which column we want to select from this particular data frame so let me mention this part df and inside this square bracket 
I need to mention this range. So columns and here if you look at the way we provided the indices here in the similar manner we will provide it here and now this time if I execute this section now you can see our columns have also been sliced and how it is working and you must have observed one thing what is happening when we mention let's say one colon four and if I show you this entire data set so ultimately our first record was for this movie that was guardians of the galaxy but when I sliced this part so eventually it should be print specific range of rows so here when I mention the slicing in this way only data frame name and in the square bracket the indices so the first index which we are mentioning here that will be the starting point so as I said in the list data structure how it works indexes will start from 0 comma 1 comma 2 and the second part after this colon whatever index we are mentioning it will be exclusive okay so when I mention 1 colon 4 that means in the output only three rows will get printed why three rows because colon 4 means less than 4 so row number on one th index then second then third index will be included in the output and that's exactly happened and that was the reason this first row movie guardian of the galaxy was not included in the output and now in the second one how we sliced the specific columns slicing of columns in data frame right so here inside this data frame we need to mention this column range as well so eventually what happens so let's try to just print this thing how it looks like and what kind of list it will provide to us so you will be able to relate it how this slicing is actually working so if I do it it will only give us the list of those column names which are starting from the first index till the third index because 4 is something which is exclusive so if I start looking at this data frame on the 0th index column name is rank on the first index column name is title so we are starting including the 1, 2 and 3rd column so that is how the list of those columns we are getting and putting this data frame the second data frame right or you can say enclosing this part inside this data frame and square bracket so this data frame outer data frame will identify these are the column names for which I need to print the data in output so let me just comment this part and execute it and the same output we are getting here but this time all rows will be included but only these three columns will be the part of final output so far we have seen how to do this slicing just specific to the rows and columns now let's discuss about that approach where we want to slice the specific piece of a data frame means some specific range of rows and within that some specific range of columns as well so how we can do that slicing of data frame so for that one we can use the method ILOC so DF ILOC and inside this one we need to mention two parameters first parameter means it will be the start and end index for the rows and after that second parameter the comma separated that will be a range for our columns part okay so if we look at our raw data frame so we have these columns and these many rows so in total 1000 rows are present in our data frame and I want to slice the data let's say I want to only include the rows from 0th to this part 0 to 5 so what will happen in total 5 rows will be included in the output 0th row first second third and fourth so in total it will become five and similarly for these five rows I only want to let's say include the rank title and the genre 
only these three columns I want to include. So how we can specify the second range which will specifically for the columns. So 0 colon, so 0th index, first index, second index. So I need to mention it till 3 so that this can be excluded. So the first parameter which we passed inside this ILOC method that will be for the row ranges and the second one which we are passing that is for the columns. So now let's execute this statement and here you can see the output right. So these rows have been included in the output first, second, third, fourth and fifth and these are the three columns which we wanted to slice from the data frame. So this part is also done. Now let's look at the other operations how we can do that. So next one will be selecting the multiple columns and just not only one column and this will you can relate with the help of the SQL queries. So how we write the SQL queries in the select statement, we try to mention multiple columns, their alias names, we try to derive new columns as well. So similar type of operations we will also try to do. So here let's say from our data frame these were the column names and specifically we want to select the title column and we want to print it in the output. So how we can do it simply use the data frame name and in the square bracket just type the column name which we want to refer in the output ok. And if we run this part now you can see only this column has been selected and that is we are looking in the output only the title name and this part you can ignore it is simply like the index because when we read the data frames from the CSV files or any other files by default the pandas data frame put this sort of indexing and this is just not any other random column name you can say uh, incremental value for each row has been generated so that this can be used for just sort of the indexing purpose. But let's say for your data frame you want to use any other column name as an index that we can also do. So this is the selection part of just one column. Now let's say we want to select multiple columns right. How we can do that? In this case we need to pass the list of the columns which we want in our output. But before that let me mention a comment here. This one is for select one column select one column and now it will be multiple. So how we can do that? Just quickly copy it, paste it, select multiple columns and here we need to mention the list of this thing. So list inside this data frame object we need to write this part. So what we want let's say the title and the genre. So here these two things we have mentioned and now if we execute it, alright I need to include this thing. So now we can see title, genre, both of the columns have been included in the final output. So this is how we can select even a single column and sometimes multiple columns in our data frame. And even we can create a different data frame, right, we can assign this sliced data frame let's say this is the only thing we want to use moving forward. We don't need let's say this entire data frame with all the columns. We can simply assign it into the new one let's say df2 and if we print that part only here in the next one df2 equals to and if I print df2 and execute it the same command so we can see it here. Now let's see how we can rename any specific column in the data frame. So renaming of a column. So for that one what we can do, we can use this method rename and inside this one we need to mention few attributes the column mapping column mapping means which column name we want to rename its old name and its new name. So here let's say this was the title right we want to replace this name with the movie title ok. So 
this is the kind of mapping I need to create. So this is the old name and this is the new name we want to provide it. And one thing we need to understand, this is the original data frame. DF variable is something which is the original data frame. So there could be two ways. If we want to make this change happen in the same data frame, then we need to enable one parameter name as in place. Okay. So once this part is true, so what will happen? These changes will be made inside the same data frame. If we don't want to do that, we can simply do this thing and this new derived data frame we can assign in a different data frame object. But for this moment, let's try to do it in the same data frame and after that if I run this df.head and I execute it. So here we need to, so why we are actually getting this error because this is the attribute which is not available in the method. So this is a wrong name and we need to fix it for this one. The This is the proper syntax. It should be columns, not the column parameter. So if we change it and we run it again, now we can see our final output which is rank. Now this column name has been changed to movie underscore title and earlier it was title only. So this is how we can rename the column and let's say within the single command, you want to do it for other, let's say you want to change this description column to movie description, then you can simply add one more thing just like a dictionary object it is. So description, I can change it to this thing, movie description, all right. So just for an example, for your reference, uh, you can try it out one more time, how it works for different columns as well. So this is the proper syntax. Now just let me remove it. So the renaming part is done. Now let's look at the other operation. So the next operation is how to derive a new column in the pandas. And this is the common use case in the data analytics. You have the raw data frame. Definitely you want to do some operation. You want to derive new columns with some business logic, with some formula. So how we can do that? So for this one, if we look at our raw data frame, one, one interesting operation we can do, this is the run time in the minutes, okay? So let's say quickly someone ask you that what is the time, the total run time for this movie in hours, right? And they have a business logic on which they are trying to do a filtering on the hour, let's say two hour greater movie, three hour greater movie. So we will try to derive a new column and we will name it like run time in hours, okay? So that's the new column we want to derive. How we can do that? Derive a new column. So we can simply write this thing, means the data frame object and the new column which we want to generate here. So we can refer this part. I can quickly copy it from the data runtime minutes and uh, this will be the new column which we want to create. I just copied it for the reference. So runtime hours and on which particular column we want to apply this logic. We want to use it for this derivation. We want to apply on this column. So df underscore this part runtime minutes and what we need to do if we want to convert this minutes part into the hours, we need to perform a division by 60 okay so this is the entire column name and if i put divide by 60 this should ideally derive a new column and this value will be derived in that particular runtime hours column so this is exactly like a variable you can understand these two things like a variable so if i have let's say a equals to 10 i want to derive a new column or new variable like a divide by 2 so this is how it will be because from this data frame, each column name or this entire range or the list of these values for particular column will be treated as a one list object. So same operation can be applied. Now, if we do it and we print this thing, let's say df dot head. Now we do it in this way. And if I execute this part, now 
we can see this has been generated runtime hours. So at this moment, you can see the total precision is uh, till the six places after decimal. And if we want to fix this one and we want the only two places after the decimal, we can use the round function of Python. And in the round function, the first parameter is the float value and the second parameter will be the precision after the decimal part. And now if I run this same thing again, so here we can see our output has been generated and only two values after the decimal part. So this is how we can derive a new column. We can apply more logics. You can play around it. You can even try to, let's say, calculate something in the INR, right? You have revenue in the millions. You can calculate it and other operations as well. Now looking at the next one. So after the derivation, for an example, if we want to delete a particular column, right? This entire column we want to delete from our data frame and how we can do that. So for this one, we can use the delete operation because this specific column is like a list object. Okay. So, and list is just a typical object in Python. So we can use this delete method to remove that particular column from this data frame, delete a column from data frame. So for this one, we need to use this del keyword. And after that, we just need to mention that particular column from the data frame, which we want to delete. So for this one, let's say this rank is something which was already populated. And at this moment, we want to just remove it completely and moving forward, we would be interested more into do our ranking analysis. So if I do it, and after this one, I print this DF head and we run it, right? Now you can see this rank column is no more here, right? It is starting from movie title. So that's how we can delete any specific column from the data frame. Now moving on to the next operation, which is applying the filter conditions. So let me just copy it, which I already written, and I will change this condition so that we can save our time as well. And we can quickly complete our observation, how we can apply the filter conditions and how it actually works in Pandas data frame. So for this one, let's say, this is exactly like a where clause in the SQL queries. What happens? You write a query like select few columns, then from the uh, table name. And after that, you write where some column names and logical operations like and or and even the comparison operators. We keep on doing it. So in the similar fashion, we can write these things. So let me first write a very simple filter condition and how it actually works. So let me add one more tab here and I will move up and uh, after this one, let me add it something after this. Okay, so this is the blank field. So simple filter condition we want to add here. Okay, so for an example, we just want to filter out all those movies, right? Because this data frame we already evaluated, we want to just get this thing, all those movies, which are greater than this two hour long window. Okay. So how we can write it, let's say new DF or filter DF equals to DF. And inside this one, we can simply use this entire column name along with the data frame object reference. And we can mention that condition, which we want to apply on this column. So DF and inside this one, DF, this runtime hours, okay? And if I apply this thing, we want all those movies which are greater than two hour of window. So this is the simple condition we have written. So this outer boundary, right? This outer boundary which we have mentioned and let me create some space here. So this is the data frame and inside this one, we have mentioned this part, this condition, which we want to execute on this entire data frame so that this filtration can happen. So we use the column name with the data frame reference and applied this greater than condition. Now, if I just execute it and 
we try to print this part okay so now you can see the output which we are getting so in total we have received 289 rows in our final output and for your reference you can even see this all these movies are more than two hour long right so that's how this filter condition is working so it is a simple filter condition now let's say you want to write more concatenated or the operator base let's say and or kind of operation so how we can do that we can use this kind of syntax and i have also included the lookup parameter let's say you want to include some kind of lookup in your filter conditions so how we can do that so let's try to understand this entire syntax which i have written for particular use case and the condition is we want to filter out all these movies which are let's say greater than two hour of window and they were only released in year 2014 or 2016 only these movies which belong to these years release year basically we want to get it in our, the final output so for this one what we did we created a list of these years which is this variable years equals to this list and after that inside this condition right you can refer this syntax which we written earlier this outer data frame reference will be used inside this one we are writing the condition so our first condition is exactly same and we have enclosed it inside the parenthesis so that we can concatenate other conditions as well and it doesn't mess up with these operators right so this is exactly same as previous now we have used this and operator here so this will be a logical and means if this condition is true and this condition is true that particular row will be included in the output so here if you want to perform a or kind of operation you can replace this parameter and with single pipe and that will act like a or operation okay so here i will again replace it back with and so this second part this one you can understand we are using this inbuilt method for the data frame object like dot is in so this will act like a in operation we write in the sql queries let's say where we have the few years and after that we are writing select star from employee table where joining date in some date values okay so in the similar fashion we can do it here this was being done we use the year column from the data frame dot is in and we pass this list so that we can perform the lookup so this and condition will be performed completely and then we can print the result so now let me execute this part and in the output now you can see we have only received the four or in total five movies which were released in 2014 and 2016 and their total runtime window was greater than two hours all right so this is how you can apply multiple conditions in a same filter logic now moving on to the next operation which is how we can apply the order by kind of logic and again it is very similar to the sql order by clause okay so let me use that code piece and here how we are going to do it let's say this was our original data and first let me run it here let me print this df dot head so that we can check uh, df dot head if i write it and execute it this is our entire data set okay now here if i want to arrange this entire data right whatever we have based on the ascending values of year only one column we want to use in the order by or sorting logic so how we can do it i will simply comment this part for the time being and i will apply this thing only for one column okay so here you can see 2014 then 12 16 so mixed ordering how we can do it this is the syntax we can use the data frame object dot sort underscore values and after that this is the one parameter we need to use by equals to list of columns when we want to apply multi-level ordering but with respect to only one column 
how we can do it we can simply remove this rating part and we can keep year inside this list and after that this parameter ascending we can use it to arrange our data in a specific order let's say ascending or descending how we can do that by default it will be ascending let's say we want to put it in the descending order so we need to disable this part and since this is only one column so this will also follow the same sequence of the true and false with respect to ascending descending part so true means it will be sorted in the ascending order but i want to do it in the descending i will make it false and again this is the in place keyword so similar to the renaming part where we did the renaming it was also asking for this same parameter whether we want to do it in the same data frame or we want to assign it in the next one so here we will be using this part the in place equals to true and in this case what will happen the sorting will be applied in the same data frame and that will be the final one and will be referred in the other places so if we do it and we execute it here right and then after that we can see our output in proper descending manner so this is just the five records let me put it in this way let's say 20 so here we can see all these 20 records but here 2016 2016 and even more than that let's say pick 500 just for your reference if we execute it okay so something starting from 2016 but at the end 500 rows ending with 2014 so this is the descending order okay now this was the simple one i will just copy it from here and i will just comment this part and we'll execute this thing so this is a multi level ordering first what we want to do we want to apply the ordering on the year level and then after that we want to apply the ordering on the ratings let's say in 2016 multiple movies were released so we want to also arrange them in the descending values right descending value of the ratings so that is the syntax for it year comma rating and in the ascending parameter we are following the same sequence first is true that means year will be arranged in the ascending order and after that this is false means rating values will be arranged in the descending manner and after applying this one it is not just specific for the columns this entire sorting will be applicable for these rows as well means any row which will fall into a different place after the sorting right it will be kept as it is based on the ordering so after applying this part now if i execute this thing so we will see this kind of output so here you can see now in the beginning we can see this thing 2006 on the top because year was applied for the ascending ordering here ratings are in the descending manner 8.5 8.5 8.2 8.0 8 something so this is how we can apply the multi level ordering now moving on to the next operation after doing the sorting this will be the last one understanding the group by operation because this is one of the important ones when we talk about the data analytics because at the end what we need to do we need to calculate some stats on some specific columns and all these things so what's the proper syntax for it let's say what we want to do we want to apply some default aggregations on these numerical columns let's say run time minutes rating votes revenue meta score hours everything we want to apply some grouping logic on specific columns whatever we want to use and then some aggregations on these numerical columns so by default how we can use the group by syntax and the aggregation functions and how it actually looks like so df dot group by and inside the parenthesis we can pass this column list right on which we want to apply the grouping and after the grouping part we can even call the aggregation functions like the sum part okay so if we execute this newly created data frame what will happen right this is the kind of aggregated output we will be receiving and this is the beauty of the pandas data frame because here we only mention the column name right and after that we call the 
some aggregation function. So by default, this was applied for all other numerical columns, right? We didn't mention anything specific that please specify or execute the sum function on just this specific column, let's say rating or runtime minutes. It applied by its own for other numerical columns and this is the value we can see for year 2016. This was the total runtime of movies in minutes which were released in year 2006 and same kind of calculation for other attributes as well. Now let's look at the other variation of the grouping and also in this step we will look at that how we can even write this data in the form of CSV in the workspace. So if I copy this part and if I paste it here and talk about this entire operation. So this will be let's say df underscore new. So again we are applying the grouping and as I said in the beginning I was mentioning that we can even apply the multi-level grouping. So first let's say we want to group on the year basis and inside the year we want to apply the grouping on the genre basis. So this is how we are passing the list of those columns and then calling the sum aggregation function. Okay. At this moment, I will just comment out the right part. I will simply execute this df underscore new so that you can see how this grouping will look like now. So you can see year is something which will be common among these genre, which is this one first action, adventure, crime and 2006 means these were the different or distinct genre movies were released in 2006. So that's how the group has been created and again same kind of evaluation on other numerical values. So definitely grouping very helpful and the way pandas is applying these aggregation functions on remaining numerical columns is definitely a good thing to observe here. So this is how multi-level we can apply. Now the part which I was talking about how we can even write this data frame in the form of CSV to this output folder. Okay. So df underscore new was created. Now I will just simply uncomment this part and here I will replace this thing to this part. And in the beginning when we uploaded this data, there was one input directory and also one output directory got created. So how we can write this entire data set with our own customized name, right? How we can pass different parameters and how it will be visible inside this output directory. So for this one, we can use this two underscore CSV method of the data frames. So df new dot two CSV inside this one, we need to provide this entire absolute path. So I will copy it. I simply copied this part and I will mention inside the first parameter. After that, we need to mention the file name group result dot CSV. Second parameter, we need to pass the separator. Let's say we want to generate our output and those columns are separated by comma. We can mention comma as a separator, but let's say we want to separate it with the help of tabs we can just remove it and we can even mention tab here. But let's keep it comma for our example and we can even apply the encoding in order to incorporate the different unicodes while publishing our data into the CSV format. So once we do it and now if this time I execute it and write data into CSV if we do it and now I execute this part right? So what will happen? I can come here and just refresh this thing. And now you can see this group underscore result dot CSV has been created here. And I can even download this result which we have. So let's download it. And after the download part, we will simply verify what kind of data we are seeing in. So this is the beautiful result which we wanted to populate and this is on my screen. And you can see Right? We solved a simple problem. We did the data analysis here, analyze something on the IMDB data we have and you can even try to generate more custom matrices with the different options and the functions available in the pandas data frame. But along with this one quickly I will show you one more operation 
just let's say we want to apply the grouping on custom columns and we want to give a different name to them as well how it will be done so let's copy it and paste it here now first let me just comment this print part and how we are actually accessing these parameters okay so let's just print this newly formed data frame right this result one so in this group by syntax let's say we want to apply the grouping on only one column which is year here and then after that we don't want to apply the sum min max kind of aggregations on all entire numerical columns we want to do it just for few specific columns so this is the syntax we can follow first group by and if it is only one column we can mention it in this way if it is more than one column we can put it in the form of list then we need to call this aggregate method and inside this one you can see we are providing a kind of dictionary means the column name and on that particular column which kind of aggregation we want to perform so let's say after doing the grouping on the year we want to calculate the count for this column which is revenue in millions and then we want to apply the min max kind of aggregation on the rating column then this is how we can mention so now if i simply execute it so we will be able to see how this output looks like so year in the grouping column and then revenue million count this is how it will look like and for rating column two aggregations have been generated the minimum rating for the 2006 released movies and the maximum rating okay this has been generated now let's say you are just interested to print this part let's say the minimum rating for the movies with respect to each year okay so how you can access it so let's do it one by one right if we include this result statement only this part was printed now if i just include rating because this is also a column right and it is part of the data frame which has been generated if i put rating here and then execute it then this is how our output data frame will look like like inside this slice we have min and max now as i said we are interested to print the minimum ratings okay so let me comment out this part and this is just like a step by step uh, n dimensional array access right so in the similar fashion we are doing it first we access the rating part then we access the min part and now if i execute it okay we can only see the minimum ratings for the movies which were released in different years so that was the basic data analytics we wanted to do and we have covered all the basic operations of pandas libraries i hope you got to learn how to use kaggle platform and how to perform basic data analysis using pandas libraries on kaggle notebook also if you want to work on more interesting real world data science projects then we have an upcoming free master class don't forget to check out scalers event page and if you find this video informative then hit the like button and if you are new to the channel then hit the subscribe button and press the notification icon if you have any doubt and any queries feel free to put it in the comment section we will be happy to answer see you next time